Hey there, I recently surpassed 300 miles on my Anguay Engine Pro bike. I sold my car and bought this as my daily commuter, so I thought it would be helpful to review this and maybe answer some of the questions that I hadn't been able to find answers to online whenever I was researching this bike. Overall, the, the quick summary is that I'm incredibly happy with this bike so far. Uh, like I said, I've, I've only ridden it about 300 miles, which is enough to kind of get a really good feel of it. It rides really nice. It's really fun and enjoyable to ride. I ride about six miles to and from, so it's about 12 miles per day, sometimes a lot more because I'll jolt around the city. Omaha specifically is kind of a combination of flat and very, very hilly. Um, I think I have about a 400 foot incline back from work, which used to take me an hour and a half to do on a regular bicycle, uh, mostly just because it was so arduous to go up, up the hills. And with this bike, it takes me about 20 minutes. It's really great. I can ride it um, on some well-defined, at least, off-road trails, so mountain bike trails too. Um, as you can see, it's got a little bit of mud on it because I've done that a couple times, uh, and it's pretty fun. So overall, the performance of it is pretty stellar for what the cost is for a bike that's under $1,500. I feel like I'm going to get a lot of juice out of this. The battery performs really well, uh, which I'll get to in a minute, but just the feel of the bike, especially with the Engine Pro dual suspension. So having the suspension in the back and front is incredibly helpful, especially in Omaha where we have pretty harsh winters. So there's a lot of potholes and the roads are pretty rough. So even riding on a paved road is a lot like riding on a, uh, a mountain bike trail or something. And it is just like butter. It's pretty amazing. The actual range I have not gotten the bike to zero percent battery yet so the range is supposed to be 75 miles I have a feeling that's only really applicable if you're driving on flatland I ride like I said about 12 miles in a day and I could probably do three trips back and forth before I'd run out of battery I might be cutting it close on that last trip but basically I charge it for maybe six to eight hours a day while I'm at work um, and I might take it off the charger and hop over to the coffee shop or something but it charges really fast uh, and then I haven't had an issue with it at all. Another nice thing is that it folds. So it folds in half. It's, it's a little bulky and like, um, heavy <laughs> when you fold it in half. I think it's 85 pounds is the total weight of the bike, but it's still nice because there's been a couple times where I've been out and my wife has had to come pick me up in our SU like smaller SUV and been able to throw it in the back and not have to worry about trying to figure out how to get the bike home. Uh, and even when we were living in an apartment, I was able to store the bike behind the front door. Um, and it was definitely bulky, but it was, it was doable. The bike does get up to 30 miles an hour. As you can see here, I actually hit 37 miles an hour. That was, uh, where I had been going 30 miles an hour and then went downhill. Always when you're, when you're pedaling, it's, it's using the recharge feature, which, uh, I saw some people online saying that it didn't work, but it definitely does. I've tested it out quite a few times where if you turn down the mode, the to zero, which is basically means that you're relying on the, elect the electric motor, not at all. It will recharge as you're going downhill. So I'll, you know, let's say I'm at 90% when I hit the top of a hill and I'll go down that same hill. Even pretty short hills will, will add two or three or 4% back to the battery life. So that's probably contributing to the factor that I've never run out of batteries yet. And I've seen some people online that have ridden their bikes for 700 miles and they usually don't keep it on the four or five setting. They keep it somewhere around the two or three, which is more of like a pedal assist. They basically never run out of battery because there's kind of a balancing act between what is being expended from the battery and what the recharge is, is working. So depending on the environment you're in and how much you're willing to pedal, um, I'll turn it off when I'm going down a hill and pedal down the hill, which is obviously super easy, but it just adds to that uh, recharge and gets me a little bit of extra juice. The battery life on the Angue Pro is uh, really good for the price. I think that you could probably easily get the 75 miles, they say, if you're on flatland and if you're, you know, on hills, it, it churns through hills really easily. Um, even a pretty steep hill, it will definitely use uh, a chunk of the battery life, but I have quite a few up and down and up and down hills on the way to and from work, which is about a 12 mile commute and rarely if ever use very much of the battery while doing that. I don't wanna get into too much of the, the technical specs. You can read the technical specs on the Engue website, but the motor feels as powerful as it needs to be. I uh, only use the throttle when I'm starting. So if I'm at a dead stop in an intersection or something, when I have to be riding with traffic, especially, uh, I'll use the throttle to get started and then I'll just lightly pedal the, the pedals 
while I'm riding so that uh, it'll keep the engine going. The brakes, especially on the Angway Pro, are incredible. They're hydraulic brakes, so the front brakes are a little touchy. Uh, I'm sure that I could adjust them, but um, I feel like that's the case on most bikes. Uh, but I, I mostly use the rear brakes and, and only use the engage the front brakes if I like really need to stop fast, and obviously I'm also engaging the back brakes in that circumstance. Um, or I just want to use it every once in a while to make sure they're still working and, and make sure they're primed in case I do need them. But uh, it's pretty pretty great how well they work, and they should have a long life cycle because uh, they're hydraulic brakes, which also is great because if it's raining or there's some or some bad weather, uh, they they should perform a little bit better than uh, pad brakes that are on some of the cheaper versions of the Angway bikes. The bike also just looks cool. <laughs> the amount of times that I will have it stopped somewhere and people will come up and ask, just they don't even know it's an electric bike at first. They're usually just, oh, that's a cool bike, and and come over to kind of geek out about it with me, even with the saddle pack on the back which I got the saddle pack from Angway it's uh, specifically designed to fit on the really nice size rack on the Angway Pro or the engine pro it just the whole the whole bike looks looks pretty cool and it's very fun to ride like I said it handles really well too because of the beefy tires uh, so basically anything I've put it through so far it, it really handles well it feels good like I said with the the shocks and I'm excited for the winter to, to get to put it to the test in there and obviously being safe and a little cautious during the winter in case I hit ice or something but um, so far in, in the mud and in the dirt and on the pavement it, it operates really well even with a little bit of sand or a little bit of gravel it can handle that just fine there are a couple accessories that don't come with it that i would highly recommend one is obviously some kind of like phone holder for your handlebar if you're going to be using your phone for directions or something the other is a mirror uh, especially if you basically because it can go up to 30 miles an hour a lot of the like suburban or like smaller areas where you might want to ride on the sidewalk it's kind of not appropriate to ride on the sidewalk just because people are walking in there and if you're going 30 miles an hour you're kind of going much too fast for for the sidewalks and then the street you're going I mean and a lot of times for me it's the speed limit is 25 or 30 miles an hour of course cars are always going faster than that but at least uh they're not going like you know 40 50 60 miles an hour um in those circumstances I always stick to the sidewalk but uh having a mirror has been huge for the first couple of weeks I didn't have a mirror and I was constantly looking over my shoulder and it gets really uncomfortable uh, with how fast the bike gets going to be looking over your shoulder all the time. It just feels like something could come up on me so quickly in front or like I could lose control. So having I just have one mirror on the left side so I can see over my left shoulder, which is most of the time where uh, traffic's coming from. Uh, you could get another one as well, but those are super easy to find on Amazon and cheap to install. So far, it's held up really well. Um, there's a little bit of a rattling that happens sometimes, um, and I've realized that it's the main thing is the kickstand screws get loose. So I'm just kind of constantly tidy, tightening those. I need to get a washer. It doesn't come with one, but uh, that will enable me to make that a little tighter and make it uh, rattle a little bit less. But besides that, the quality of it's held up. I've definitely put it through its fair share of potholes and bumps, and so far at 300 miles, it's holding up really well. So overall, I'm super satisfied with it, and um, I have a friend who has the EP2, which uh, he was the one that inspired me to get, to get this bike, and he loves that as well. So the whole range of bikes um, are, are great, and I highly recommend them for the price. I mean, you could definitely get an uh, even higher quality electric bike if you wanted to spend some more money, but to be able to spend $1,500 or even $1,000, if you check their website, they're constantly on sale. Um, usually 100 to 300 dollars off you can get some really good good deals um the shipping time was a little bit longer than i would have liked it's about like two weeks was how long it took to get to me so i highly recommend like if you're going to order accessories to order the accessories with it because they'll all come at the same time or close to the same time otherwise you'll be waiting a long time for them if you're interested in buying one yourself i have a affiliate code down in the description it just helped me out a little bit. I have a baby on the way. That's why I sold my car was to save some money. If you are going to make the purchase anyway, uh, it would be awesome if, if you could use that code. It would help me out. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you have a lot of fun, as much fun as I do. Um, let me know in the comments below if you end up buying it or if you have any questions.